Hello and welcome to this introduction to coding video. In this video, we're going to look at what is coding. So let's have a look. First of all, let's pass it back to you and get you to think about what does the term coding, computer coding or computer programming make you think of? What sort of thing do you think of when you hear those words? Maybe it's something you've just seen on film or TV. Maybe you've seen some hackers or something on some TV show. Um, you might already have an image in your head or some kind of idea. You might have something like this in your head, this kind of image. So what we've got here is we've got a monitor with a black background. Uh, we've got uh, some, lots of text, which is in different colours. and It looks a bit kind of cryptic. There's some, definitely some English words in there, but some of it doesn't quite make any sense. There's some word initials, some punctuation, different colours for the different bits of text. It all looks a bit mysterious. And maybe that's what this sort of image you had in your head, um, this sort of matrix looking mysterious load of text on a black background. And lots of people do. And coding can look like this, especially if you're a fan of dark mode. Uh, but coding can also look a bit like this one here. So what we've got here is quite an old screenshot now from Scratch, which is a block based coding tool. So instead of typing out the code like we did, we saw in this previous picture, the previous example, what we've got now is little bits of code you can drag together. And you can change things there. If you have a look, you might be able to spot you can perhaps change some of the numerical values or set particular sounds or things that are going to happen. But there's a set number of controls and you put them in particular order and kind of drop them together like blocks. And this allows you to control that little sprite you can see on the screen, that little penguin. This is also coding. This is a great way of learning coding, in fact, because it allows you to focus on giving computers instructions um, rather than focusing on um, knowing how to type everything. And I've given you a hint there as to what coding might be. So basically what we're doing is telling a computer what to do, telling it where to move that sprite, telling it how to create a cool program to use um, by giving it instructions. So we are telling a computer a series of things it needs to do. Uh, you might have also heard it being used as uh, termed as computer programming. That is, we're not going to worry about the distinction between the terms here. We're just going to think of coding in general. And when we're thinking about coding, what it be, can be useful to do if we want to kind of look at it in a different way is to see how it's similar to a recipe. So like a recipe, the first thing we need are some ingredients or some things to tell the computer about, make sure it can use. That might be some data we've got. We've got files it wants to use, images, sounds. It might be what the screen needs to look like, where there could need to be buttons, other things that need to happen. So it, need, it needs to know about some stuff first before it can do anything with it. So you need to make sure the computer knows about all the ingredients in the same way you shouldn't start a recipe and suddenly realize you don't have any flour in. Then you need to give it instructions, clear, logical instructions, just like in a recipe that you need to follow. These need to be in a particular order because the computer is not going to skip ahead just how in a recipe you need to make sure you put things in the right order or it could go very wrong. And finally, there might be some other stuff in there, things like conditions. So a chance to say, if this is the case, do something, or if that is the case, do something else. Now, this is common in recipes, particularly things like, you know, if you've got a gas oven or a fan oven or an electric oven, you might use different temperatures and you can't use the wrong one. Or it's not going to work. Same with computers. It might be what kind of size of screen does it have a touch screen? And that's going to really impact what instructions you can get the computer to do. You can't say if the user touches the screen, if there's no touch screen. So to give computers these instructions, we write code in something called coding languages. You might have heard this reference before. They've got lots of different and weird names um, and they are ways of communicating with the computer to give it the instructions. Let's have a look at a few. Let's see what code might look like. We've already seen a couple of examples. Let's see some more. So what we are looking at to do with this first example and with all the examples we're going to see is put the phrase learn to code on the screen. So in this example, we've got the word print, we've got some brackets, and then we've got learn to code inside those brackets. Uh, there's also some quote marks to tell it that's the phrase we want it to be printed. This is in a coding language called Python. And what we are doing is printing a phrase to the screen here. Uh, Python is a very common coding language. And as you can see from the fact it uses the word print, it does use a lot of um, familiar words to tell you what to do, but you need to know what those actually do themselves. Here's quite a different looking example. Uh, we've got some P's inside some funny little pointy triangular brackets and the phrase learn to code inside them. This is HTML. 
or hypertext markup language, the way you write websites, the way you put the content on the websites, the structure. Um, so this is telling the computer, here's a paragraph and it should say, learn to code. Another example here, we've got one, this is a coding language called Ruby. So it looks a little bit different. Uh, it says puts at the start and then the phrase learn to code in quote marks. Again, we've got that phrase marked out where it is. And we've got a word that we might not recognize in this context, but is part of the coding language. Another example, again, that looks a bit similar to that Python one. It's got the word print, but also an LN at the end, but still some brackets and also a weird little semicolon at the end. This one is processing a coding language that's actually based off another coding language called Java. Um, and it's used to create visualizations and art. So it's a, a cool example to think about if you saw it in action. But in this example, again, it is just printing the word learn to code so we can see it. And then we've got another example for the, for the web here. This one is JavaScript. Um, you might have heard of it, you might have seen it on your web browser mentioned. Uh, it makes websites interactive and do things. Um, so this time it's going to show us the creator of the thing, um, the phrase learn to code in the console, um, which is, gives us a chance to see something that's not on the web page, basically, that's being logged for us to see. And that thing we're going to see is the phrase learn to code. And finally, we've got a little block in Scratch that says say learn to code. And it makes the little sprite, the little character say in a speech bubble learn to code. So all six of these examples are basically doing the same thing, but they all look a bit different which is interesting. We'll return to that in a moment. So programming languages are what we use to write the instructions so the computer can understand them. So the computer knows what's going on. But actually, the computer doesn't understand the coding language. Um, computers only actually understand binary, which is one or zero, on or off, so electrical currents, essentially. So a coding language, as well as having a strict way of writing it, also needs a way of translating that, bi that uh, coding language into binary. Now, these have been created so you don't have to learn binary, which is nice. Uh, but it does mean that when you start learning to code, you're probably going to need to download some kind of tool or find out using some instructions the way in which you run your code. Running being the way that you make the computer follow the instructions. Because just typing them somewhere doesn't just work. You need to make sure it knows that it needs to translate it from that particular coding language, say Python, into binary so the computer can follow those instructions. Uh, there might be a specific tool you tend to use. Maybe it's called a compiler. It might be you have a whole little environment where you can type the code and you can also run it. Uh, so often the first stage when you start learning to code is to get that set up. Now, as we've already seen, there are lots of different coding languages. We've seen six, there are lots more. And that's because they're all suited to doing different things because they're like languages. Some languages have words for things that don't exist in other languages because like when you've got some sort of spoken languages because they aren't needed or they are needed. That's the same for coding languages. So there's going to be certain things that you, you want to do in a certain coding language that makes it very easy to do it because there's words for, to do that. Um, so if you wanted to write something in a speech bubble, for example, there's one command in Scratch that would do it. But in other coding languages, you'd have to create the speech bubble as well. That's not built in by default. So when you, if you're now inspired to go away and learn coding, you might want to first think about what you'd like to do and if therefore there's a good one to go and learn. So on that note, let's finish up by thinking about why you might bother to learn to code. You've watched this video, so maybe you're interested in coding. Why should you have a go? Well, what it can allow you to do is make computers do what you want. That's the sort of first and foremost point. Uh, that's what we've been talking about in this video, making computers do what you want. So I'm sure you've had experiences where computers have not done what you want. They often don't. And you've been very frustrated. Um, and what you can do with coding is tell it what to do, tell the computer what it should be doing. And hopefully then if it starts not doing what you want, you can tweak it. You can go and look why it's not doing it rather than not knowing where to start, not knowing how to make it do what you're looking for. It can help you to solve problems that you might not have known another solution for, useful things, how you can work with something in a different way, maybe, uh, because you can get creative. You can have a go at thinking of the solution and telling the computer how to do it. 
can also help you communicate all sorts of different things. You can make websites, you can make games, you can make apps, you can make all sorts of things that can help you communicate your ideas, your work, all sorts of stuff. Um, even if you're just creating a website that could show you, but you've got control over that website and you can tweak things as you need. Could also be really good at automating repetitive tasks, boring things, because whilst you might get bored or get repetitive strain injury from doing boring things, the computer won't. The computer will keep doing it as long as you tell it to. Um, so computers are really great for automating things that you have to do on the computer that are repetitive. It can also allow you to analyze data. There's lots of coding languages designed specifically for working with data, analyzing data. So those can be really handy if you want to work with data sets and do different things um, and make it a lot easier um, because there's lots of built-in commands that you can use. And it can also just allow you to be creative in all sorts of different ways, whether that's in a really functional way, be creative so you can make something you can use, or whether it's just having fun, making something cool, having a go, trying to make a game or a chatbot, all sorts of things that you might want to try out. There's all sorts of things you might be able to do with coding. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in coding. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content, comments section is all yours. If you want such type of informative videos, then do subscribe to the channel. See you in next video.